Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbook and Craft. Just coming on with my first um, video for uh, my empty the box challenge. Basically, I put a box of really old random stuff together and I'm challenging myself to use it before the end of the month. Otherwise, it may be donated or given away. Um, doing fairly well using bits and pieces. There was some really, really, really old, gaudy scrapbook paper that I threw in. Don't so much mind these two pages. I'd probably use those. Um, but it's this one, ill, the feet, really ill, and the pink feet, ill, that I probably will never use. Um, so what I thought is I'd have a play with some Delusions paints and some stencils. These stencils I've actually designed and make in my store. So this one has um, three different size designs. This one is my what we'll call reverse diamonds. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, where it just puts the lines and leaves your background colour in solid blocks, which is really fun. And a reverse heart as well, which again leaves your hearts the colour of the paper and just puts blocks in the colour, which looks really cute. So I'll be using some, if not all of those. And I've got hot pink, an aqua, delusions paints, a green and a white. Um, not sure whether I'm going to gesso. No, I'm not going to gesso. So I've also just got some makeup sponges to use in the paints. Um, I thought I had another one around. I've also picked out these half pack of rub-ons I may put on the top of the paper. Um, so I thought we'd just come on and have some fun and show you how you can turn ugly old scrapbooking paper, hopefully, that we all have in our stash. Um, I even find when I buy paper pads, even nowadays when I buy some paper pads or even have some 6x6 six six papers, um, there's always a couple in the range that I just do not like. So let's start off with the not happy birthday because that's like a mod of colours. Let's start off with this. I sort of want to get the feet. One second, I did not actually put my apron on. If I don't put my apron on when I'm doing paints, I get rather messy. It's quite late at night here. So if I sound tired, that's the reason why. Excuse me while I just do up my apron. See, I'm so disorganised that you never get my apron on. What I might do is start by putting some blotches of colour down. I've also got some on the floor. Really cheap baby wipes from Audi in Australia. Um, I may swish the paint around with. I may just use it to clean up my fingers. Let's get into it. Let's get some of this lime green just in three spots on the page. Just felt like playing today. I should be in bed. I've not been well all week. I've had a viral infection. You go to the doctor and if so I feel like crap, I've got a sore throat, I've got this tinking headaches this week, just headache after headache. And he goes, Oh, it's a viral infection, go home and have Plenty of fluids and do all that, and it's like really. Poor Alexis has been ill with it as well, so she's finally gone to sleep, and I just wanted to play. So you can still see the feet under the um, design, so it'd be interesting when I put the stencil over the top what it will look like. I'll turn my paper around so it makes it a bit easier. So that's that one. Get some of this hot pink. Just got my pots of colour just off to the side. Um, so I don't squish them, squish them off the table hopefully. I love these delusions paints because a lot a little bit goes a long way and they also blend really nicely and you can write over them and they're quite affordable too what I like is when they're wet you can actually blend them up I'm just blending some purple into this so it may look like a hot mess before it actually looks really good but I did a similar thing in an art journal page and then I went over and I tried to dull down the colour and put white over it and it wasn't real successful. Um, actually, I should not have my craft mat. Let me get rid of my craft mat. It's going to be a cut in paint. Let's get my craft mat off the table.
table and I'll work on my drop paper because that's what it's there for. Let's go right there into the paper. I think our neighbours have finally decided to go to bed. There was a, I don't know what it was, it was loud music. And I looked out the window to see who it was and I'm sure it was halfway down the road. Oh my god, if it was loud at my house, like about six or seven houses away, imagine what it would be like right next door. Oh, you just heard my phone go buzz. Someone double tick put a new video up on YouTube or commented. My phone goes buzz when that happens. Which I'm sort of quite liking that. Let's give that a quick buzz with the heat gun. And we'll do some stenciling over the top. And see, oh, now my baby watch in the way. Oh, I need to clean up my desk this weekend. and do I love this heart so let's go and do some hearts in different areas so this is what we call our my reverse heart stencil so when you do this design the actual hearts that I'm stenciling will remain my background color and the pink will sort of go in between the hearts and because the lines are so small just flip it up so you can see it because the lines are so small they almost disappear I'll just move that stencil so I'll just do some over here just going off camera just to um, when I pick the paint up out of the pot I'm just sort of mushing it around on my drop paper so I don't have big blobs of paint going on I find the less paint you have with these stencils, the better it is. So all my stencils I actually buy in um, blank TCW, the Crafters Workshop templates. They sell just blank templates and I cut them on my laser machine. I do want to eventually get my own plastic but I found that's the best lightweight plastic and it doesn't warp with a laser machine. I've tried several other plastics and you end up with um, mountains and that's not very good when you're trying to stencil. Let's go in with some blue over here. So what I'm trying to do is do a complementary colour with the stencil over where the blobs are of the colour. So I'm going blue over the pink at the moment. I'm going to turn my page up this way. I thought it'd be fun to have some pre-decorated backgrounds to tear up and use in my art journal page. I like them upside down as well as so the right way. So I'm not cleaning my stencil between if I get a bit of contamination of colour. I don't really mind what colour I haven't done. I haven't done green. So let's do green over. And I've got a bit of green in the lid. Let's do green over this blue bit. When you're doing the stenciling with such a fine stencil like this, it's better to go an up and down action. But I do tend to do a crossways action. You should do a tapping up and down. But... I tend to um, also do swirly motions and things. And if it bleeds through underneath, it doesn't matter. Um, great thing about this stencil is you can actually line it up. So I want to go across the page. So I've just lined it up with the last row of hearts. And I'm just going to get really subtle effects. Where do we want some more hearts? We want a bit more down here. Oops. What I might do is put this one outside to dry and tackle one of the other ones. I really like how I love these purple hearts coming through. I don't know what colour I could do in there. Green. 
Whoops. Ah, oh, keep picking it up from the green lid and the green lid wants to run all over the table. And that, as I said, it's very late here. Just watch, finish watching the movie. I was only going to watch about an hour and come in my craft room, but it's nice and snuggy on the couch under my dressing gown to keep warm. I didn't want to move. It's a bit cold in my craft room. There's no heat at the moment and it's got really cold in Australia. Even though we're only into autumn, it's we've had a bit of a cold snap. I feel like I need some hearts here, but what colour? Pink? I'll go pink. What's the worst that could happen is I could just make a complete big mess and work some gesso on it, start again. I don't want these to be very light. So I'm just going to tap very lightly. My stencil's actually moving a bit. I actually want it a bit darker than that. So we get a bit more paint. Oh, the stencil down a bit more. I'm actually liking this hot mess. So this sheet's not going to be used in one piece. I'm going to actually um, take it into smaller pieces and use it in my art journal. I might put that aside to dry and then work on another one. So you can't even see, I can see a bit of the feet here um, and down here, which I don't mind actually. And you can sort of see it in here. Um, so let's do another one and let's do a different stencil. So let's do the blue feet. Hope I was in shot for most of that because I was not looking. Let's again just plop some colour. In a couple of spots it's actually turned it purple which is quite nice. So when I'm doing big pages or big journal spreads, I tend to pick three spots and stick main colour. And then I sort of just add... This pink is very blotchy. Very blobby. All the other ones are really smooth. I don't know what happened to my pink. But it still works. Okay, so now we're going with the blue. And just... I'm getting this all over my fingers, but that's okay. If I bring it into the pink, it'll actually create purple, which is rather cool. So I like that's what I like about these delusion paints is when they're wet, they'll actually mix. But if I actually dry them, you can actually layer over the top of them without contaminate. Oh, not um, the colours won't mix, and they're permanent when they dry, so they're really cool. They're really nice to put pens and stuff over the top of. I was actually just thinking with my empty the box challenge, I'm wondering if this is actually using up my paper or just slapping some paint on it. Might have to use these in a journal to consider it used up. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Is it used up because I've repurposed it? Or has it got to be used up and put in a journal? I don't know. I just thought it'd be a good concept. I was inspired by a couple of YouTubers that are doing the same thing. Sarah Elliott, um, a card maker in, I admire her cards beautifully. I struggle with cards. Um, admire her cards beautifully. She's in Canada and she started a use it up challenge at the start of the year. And I had this idea to do my empty the box challenge starting in January. And we finally got it up in May so that you can tell how my year's been going. It's just, and it's only going to get busier. Um, and then Carolyn Doobie, a mixed media artist, um, does some wonderful videos on just playing. Um, permission to play. She's got a few classes out and different things. And she did a series, I think it was last month, um, she was hoarding stuff in her stash, so she'd pull it out and use it um, as well. Some of this stuff is actually from when I had a retail store. I actually closed my retail store when my daughter was one year old. Um, she was good. She sat in the pram next to me. I take, took her to work um, nearly every day, three days a week, and because my partner worked. And she'd sit in the pram until she was about 11 months old, start to crawl, become a nightmare in the shop. Couldn't find appropriate childcare, da 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 da. Didn't want to be one of these mums that wanted, that just stuck their kids in childcare and 
five days a week. So I decided to become a stay-at-home mum, which I thoroughly enjoy. But now my daughter's eight. It's time to do some more stuff. I have been working the last... Um, I've, been, I've had my business 12 years, um, which is a very long time. So in that 12 years, I originally started as a website, um, just selling on eBay, really, just selling off some extra stuff I just didn't need anymore. And I thought, oh, I've got to buzz out of selling on eBay. Um, so I sort of buy some more stuff. So then I started with a website. And about three and a half years before my daughter was born, my daughter was born in 2007, um, I was actually living across the road from a commercial building that come up for a lease. And I thought on a whim, nah, I've been selling on online for a while. Why not open a shop? So within a week and a half, I decided to open a shop. My family thought I was crazy. So for three and a half years, I wanted to run a very successful business and website. Um, but unfortunately, um, well, unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately, I met my partner and... We had my daughter and, yes, I closed my shop. So after that, sort of took a year off and then with my business um, and then my partner and I started doing shows around Australia, craft shows. So we'd go to Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth um, and exhibit at the craft shows. So we did that for about five years. And I'm just, I'm over-travelling, I'm over-doing shows. So at the moment I'm trying to set up... A shop from home with all the rules and regulations that go along with that. Um, or, and some workshops in our local town. I'm trying to find a venue to go and do some workshops and things at the moment. So I do still sell online um, as well. So I've got my fingers in a few different pies. But I thoroughly enjoy teaching. So I love the shows because we do mini classes at the shows. And teach new techniques with my stencils and play with delusions paints all day and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So this one's looking... Oh, I was going to do a different stencil. You didn't tell me. I picked up the heart stencil. Really? I must be having so much fun. I was actually going to do this one in a different stencil. Well, that was silly. Silly Billy, let's add a different stencil in now. Now that we've got that one really hearty, which one are we going to use? We might use this one. Okay, you've got to shout out and tell me when I pick up the wrong stuff. I'm obviously very involved in what I'm doing and just having so much fun. So this is what I call my trio stencil. I'm not sure what it's called on the website. Um, but it's tr uh, got three different sizes, the same sort of shape. Um... So you can combine them. I can't really see that. Um, actually, these pages might be good to go back and doodle on. That would be cool. Let's get some more pink happening in here. Um, I might even do that. Go back and doodle around these when I'm done. How's it looking? Hopefully, it's very bright. I'm, it's really hard for me to see into the camera. Let me stand up for a minute. I'll stretch my legs anyway. Oh, yeah, it's looking. Bear with me a minute. So these Delusions paints are very, very bright. So it's hard for me to see up into the little lens on the camera. Um, and I'm determined this month, and you may have heard me chat about it um, before, determined this month to learn editing got my laptop out, don't like using it, but my main computer has no speakers, I think I've mentioned that before, so instead of getting my main computer fixed, I'm determined to play with my laptop, and this month I'm determined to learn how to do voiceover videos and do a bit more video editing, because at the moment we're a one, what I call a one hit wonder, um, I haven't stenciled some green, I think that was just my green sponge, bugger. Um, so at the moment I can do two types of videos, which is a talking video like this, or I can do fully sped up with music, um, and I can't stick two videos together, so hence why I try to film when I'm uninterrupted. So I've got to wait until my daughter's asleep, not in bed, but asleep. 
because as like all nine-year-olds she comes up with every excuse why to get out of bed it's actually funny when she comes out of bed at the moment um, I go and how may we assist you tonight Alexis or how may I not assist you because usually I just send her back to bed um, so she thinks I'm quite funny when I say things like that. How may I not assist you tonight? So my usual response is, go have a glass of water and go back to bed. And then she goes, why do I bother coming out? I said, exactly. So yes, we're having a bit of fun at that at the moment. But As all eight-year-olds do, they test your patience. And Alexis is no different. I have to get her to do some more videos. She's actually got a giveaway coming up. Well, this may go up after her giveaways close. But Alexis has decided she wants to do regular giveaways. So she's going to do a little giveaway each month. She's already planned. This is my mis mis planning and misorganised. She's already planned out her next couple of giveaways. She's planned out what she's going to give away from Mummy's stash. I said she can do a small one each month. So she did some jelly prints. And this video may go up after the jelly prints is closed. But there'll be another giveaway. So watch out for that in July. Um another giveaway from Alexis and then we're actually planning a massive giveaway a massive thing in um, November December my birthday's in November and Alexis is in December so we're gonna do a really big challenge and have a really big giveaway how does that look I don't know whether I'm making a hot mess or whether I'm getting anywhere let's put that one aside I don't even know how long I've been going for um, I have no idea. So if this abruptly cuts out at any stage, um, you know, my time is up. Okay, so this one's nearly dry. I've got this happy birthday one here that is so gaudy. Um, I would never use this in a million years. Let's see if I can change up the colours a bit because I've got a few more delusions paint. Delusions. Yeah, delusions paint. I thought I said that wrong. Bring some yellow into this one and I haven't got all of them. I haven't got the new ones and I'm missing some of the other ones. Um, what colour will we put away? I'll put the green away. Blue and yellow are going to make green anyway. I'll put the green away, whatever this one's called. Fresh lime. We'll still we'll bring the yellow into it. Although the yellow is going to cover up much, but we'll see what we go. See how we go. So we'll start with some pink. Also, like to say a thank you while I'm chatting away and doing this. Um, big thank you to all my new subbies that have come on board. I appreciate it and Alexis loves to see the numbers go up and she loves to get comments on her videos and we love to get comments as well. It's fun having someone to craft with. I'm hoping I'm in frame with most of this because I forget to keep looking up and having a look. This is going to be interesting because these colours are really dark. Oh, I've probably just got paint on my head because I went and scratched my head. Let's put that heart stencil right out the way so I don't use it again. Obviously, was having fun before and picked up the stencil and didn't even know I was doing it. Let's put this into the yellow. Now we're going to see a lot of this pattern, but that's right. My yellow is getting a bit dirty because I think I had green on my sponge, but hey, it doesn't matter. It's only paint and paper. What's the worst? I muck it up. I throw a bit of paper out. That's one way to use up my empty my box, isn't it? Oh, this might be looking a bit muddy. I was hoping not to make mud on camera tonight. Let's go in with some blue. It's fun to come in my art room and just play. This is interesting watching me do 
paints and papers. I was going to do up a, just a sped up video, but I thought I'd sit and have a chat tonight. Something different. If you're still here, I don't know how long this video has been going for. Thanks for still joining in. I like noise in my studio when I work, so <laughs> I've got noise by talking to myself. <laughs> uh, if I start answering myself, you know I'm crazy. Um, so often when I'm working, I will put on longer YouTube videos or vlogs or um, and sit there and just listen to the noise. Oh, I've listened to the noise, sorry. Listen to the people um, doing their thing. And then if it's something I'm really, really interested in, um, I'll usually pop my iPad beside me and so I can have the screen a bit bigger than on my phone. Um, if it's something I'm really, really interested in, I'll mark the video and then I'll go back and sit there and watch it again. Bring a bit more pink back in. We can get some purple happening. I like the purple. One. I heard the other day that your scrapbook page has to go through an ugly phase before it gets into a good phase. So I think we've hit the ugly phase. Let's see what other stencils we've got. This is another one of mine. This is, I think this one's called Pebbles or Stones on the website. Oh, if I remember, I'll try to link them below. This one's made out of a thicker plastic that I originally experimented with. Um, so we'll see how this goes. This might lift up too much. This might bleed through too much underneath. No, it's kind of working. Um, so we've got the same design. We've just cut it out of the, um, the thinner stencil plastic. This one I found a bit thick, but a lot of the times when I do... When I do test runs or I have goof ups, they end up in my stash. Or they get sent out with happy mail. Because I can't really sell a lot of the goof ups. And trust me, some days there's a lot of them, especially when I'm designing templates. Sometimes I design something and then um, I think it's all correct on the screen. I've got to cut it on the machine. Instead of pulling out one piece of plastic, you pull out six million little pieces. Um, or you have the setting wrong, and yeah, there's a lot of goof ups that I do lately. Ooh, that's really pretty. I wonder if I bring the pink in over the yellow and do pink dots over here. I'm going to pink purpley dots. Oops, I'm out of frame. I have to move up a bit. Oh, we've got blue and, oh my god, we've got lots of things happening. Oh, I'm liking this now. I'll go through here. They've moved from the ugly stage to the hmm, I don't mind it stage. I'm going to fill in all the yellow bits with pink over the top because I think that gives it a bit of continuity across the page. Is that the word some of the more professional artists use? Not that I call myself a professional artist. I did go to university, I studied art all through high school, um, and I did go to university for six months and did a fine art course. But I had to leave university and get full-time work because our silly government in Australia took seven and a half months to, to grant my what we call Ausstudy in Australia or overseas, you'd probably call it student loans, but it's the money you get to live on while you're studying. And it took them seven and a half months to grant my claim and I just couldn't survive. I was working part-time, I was trying to go to uni. My typical day was up at... 4.30 in the morning, at work at 5, work till 2 in the afternoon, the 9 hour shift, and then I'd have a 2 hour commute to college, to university, and then I'd do university at night till 9 o'clock, and this would go on several days of the week, and I was just absolutely exhausted, and that's what I had to, I had to do those hours to make the money to survive, because you have to eat while you're at university, and being an art course, you had to pay for arty stuff, not as if you could just take a pad and a pen in or any other courses and get away with it. We had to buy all our own art supplies and that sort of stuff and just got too, too much. 
too much and a two hour commute every day to college and then home again was just ridiculous. So I never went back and finished my arts degree. Sort of didn't do it art for a long, sort of long time. I sort of then picked up scrapbooking about, oh, I started my business about 12 years ago, so a bit before that I was scrapbooking. Um, when scrapbooking was just creative memories and not much else, a few stickers, so about 12, 15 years ago. Now there's just, I think there's too much choice really. It's overwhelming. Even to look back um, at what I could get for my shop back and I've been out of my shop. Well, my daughter's turning nine this year, so I've been out of my shop, retail shop, eight years. Uh, to look what I could get back then and what's available now, it's just a hundredfold of what's available. Um, and I found even doing the shows, um, with the stencils are fairly new, but we did chipboard for all five years. And people would come, would go back to the same town at the same time of the year, the show would run the same time of the year in the town each year. So you go back the next year and people go, first few years of the show is really great. And they come back, they buy lots. They'll pick up buckets and buckets and carrying bags and bags of stuff. Next year they come back and go, oh, sort of bought some of that last year. So they'd buy some more new stuff. And by about, about the fourth year we're doing it, they'd walk past the stand and go, oh, we haven't even used the stuff from last year. And they wouldn't come in and have a look. I think scrapbookers have got so much stuff now that they're realising that they have to use it. And I'm exactly the same. I have that much stuff. But as you can tell from the quite a few haul videos I've been doing, it doesn't stop me from buying more. I love that. Isn't that awesome? Oops, just got paint on my tripod. Um, so the shows were getting more expensive and we were just taking less and less through the till. And it was just getting frustrating that... Um, the expenses were going up and we had to pay for accommodation while we were away. We had to pay um, for babysitters for my daughter. We had to pay for um, travelling and take us two days to drive to some of the events. Um, actually, I might use this stencil on here. Why not chuck this stencil on here? So I decided to. I did a couple of years of flying. So instead of driving to the events, I'd fly. But then you'd have to pay for your stuff to be freighted around Australia and the company wasn't very good and I just gave up shows. I may do the local Melbourne show, which is I can get someone to drive me down. I don't drive, I legally not allowed to drive, I have low vision. Um, so I'll never have a licence or a car, which never annoyed me until I had a child. And my poor daughter and I have to walk to school every day, um, which is about a kilometre. But hey, we're getting nice and fit. Um, so yeah, I tried doing the shows for 18 months where I actually um, freighted my stuff. Um, around and the company would keep my stuff between the shows and store it which we pay for in the freighting fees um, but then there'd be problems with shipments and then we had train derailments and then we had missing shipments and it just got oh, I like that over the hearts it just got all too much so I'll probably now stick to doing my two or one Melbourne show I've got one coming up in August um, and there's a local one in Bendigo I may do in June um, they're the two cheaper shows to do, as in dollar-wise, to lay out, and we still make a decent amount of money. So, And then I want to set up classes and things in my hometown, which will be better. So that's a bit about me. You've got to be my life history in this session, if you're still watching. <laughs> Thank you for still watching me babble, or if I'm keeping you entertained whilst you craft good. I sometimes stick a few of the longer you streams on or live streams on while I'm crafting because I do like the noise. And it's like you're in the room crafting with me. I think this one's hit the hot mess stage. I don't tend to clean my templates. I'm very terrible. Um, I do clean them with when I use texture paste but I don't actually clean them when I use... and this is actually funny I can't actually see... oh no I can see barely some of the feet Oh, there's a foot. So I'm actually very pleased with how these have come out. Um, just wondering if I want to do anything else to them. This first one's dry. Oh, 
my lovely hands. Um, I'm wondering if I want to take white or black and add a bit. I haven't used our diamond pencil. I wonder if I might just put my lids on the ones I'm not going to use again because these tend to dry out. That's what I tend to do. I tend to get at a very indecisive stage. I'm wondering if I add black or white. I'd actually love to look into doing some live streams. Um, a few of my favourite YouTubers actually live stream. Um, I watch Inky Quill in Australia and who's the other one I live stream watch? Um, I've cut her live because of the time difference. A couple of my other favourite YouTubers, I just watched their um, taped um, uh, taped I think it's a minute, taped um, things on YouTube um, while I'm crafting. Let's see what we do with this white. You're probably all screaming, no, don't put white over it, you'll stop it up. See, if I was live streaming, I think I might have to get a better webcam before I go and live stream or get a computer. Maybe I can do it from my laptop. Um, I don't know. Something I want to look into. That won't be till the end of the year, though. Hmm. Don't necessarily hate it. Don't know whether I like it. This is what I call my reverse diamond stencil. So this one... Um, I have a few of the reverse stencils because I like the two effects. Um, we have reverse brick wall, which is rather cool as well. What happens if I actually do this? I think I'm getting this white to be green um, because I've got green on my sponge. So we've got quite a few of the reverse stencils. I've got reverse circle, I've got reverse heart, reverse diamonds, reverse brick walls. I also make all my stencils, um, make and design them myself. So a lot of the designs we have on our website have actually come out of customer request. So if you're still watching, yay, you're still here, you'll get a bit tidbit of information. Um, if you've got a design in a stencil you'd like, you can contact me through YouTube or contact me through my website is usually listed at the bottom of YouTube. Um, email me a drawing. Um, if it's a drawing like a doodle you've done or something, we can turn it into a stencil for you. It's not that expensive. Depends how much work I have to do to the design. Um, especially I find some companies, um, I love their stencil, but I find it's too big or too small. Primarily on my website, you'll find six by six stencils, which is what this one is. But I can do up to 12 by 12 stencils, but I find you just don't have the call for them. And I find when you're working at shows, if, you bring out the 12 inch stencils, people go, oh, I don't want to cover the whole page, but you give them a six inch one and they put a bit here and a bit there. And I'm getting a bit heavy handed with this paint. So let's get some of this off. So I do make them to order. Um, it's also with the chipboard as well on my website. I make that to order too. Um, I must do a lot of work on my website starting May, June, second half of this year. Um, I don't know, what do you think? Do you like it? I like it because I'm only going to be using sections of it. I think I like it. Let's go and add. This one had every stencil on it. <laughs> Let's go and add a little bit of the white to this one, but not as much as that one. Um, what you can also do is there's a lot of paint on the top of this stencil. So, this may totally rip it. You can actually, after you've stenciled a lot, stamp. Stamp it off as well. Might just do this one in little bits. Just here and there. Don't know how long I've been going for. Usually I'll put a timer. My camera only films for 45 minutes and I did a little of film before this. Um, I didn't even think when I turned the camera on to set my timer. So what I might do is I'm nearly finished. So this is a good way 
I said I wasn't going to put this all over the page, and look, I'm putting it all over the page. I'm just having fun. I'm playing. Ooh, I do like that effect. Um, so if you've got old scrapbooking papers in your stash, and it doesn't, even if you don't have old scrapbooking papers, grab some just um, recycled paper or just some junk mail, some old bills you don't want anymore, don't need anymore, and just have a go with your paints and stencils and make some pretty patterns. And do remember when you are doing them that you don't necessarily need to use it in a big piece. What I'm going to do is actually cut all these up. And I'm just looking at these rub-ons and I might look at my hands. <laughs> um, which one's the driest? I'll have a go at these, sticking these rub-ons. That one I just did. Just got them tucked under my... That one's very wet. This one's very wet still. Let's just blast this with a heat gun. Let's put the rub-ons on this one because this one's like had everything thrown at it. So what I love about these Delusions paints is they dry really, really quickly. Except when you get big blobby bits on, I can probably go around the big blobby bits. Oh, that's a big blobby bit pink. I've always got paint under my nails. I don't even know what time it is tonight. Probably the wee hours in the morning. Okay, I've got wet stencils everywhere. Let's, what am I going to rub these on with? What have I got to rub them on with? This will work. Yeah, that'll work. So these rub-ons were really cheap. They were $2 back eight years ago when I had a retail shop. And as you can see, they've been used. And with no A's, <laughs> what can I really spell? So this is a good way to use up rub-ons. I don't even know whether they'll work still. Let's see if we can get them up. Backing's coming off. And as you can see, it's cut up because what I tend to do is cut out the letter I want. Because if I accidentally lean on something that I shouldn't, it doesn't matter with these ones because I don't care. I don't care if we get half the letters on or not. never had a good relationship with rub-ons in my scrapbooking. It was sort of always hit and miss, whether I was doing it right. And look, the top of that didn't even work, but who cares? And I'm probably using the wrong tool to rub them on. I don't think I've got a paddle top stick. What's that? I wonder if this will work. It's a blunt pencil. So I just want to put the rest of those ends down somewhere. And watch this T and U V down here. Top of the end still not coming off. They usually come with a paddle pop stick with the um, rub ons. But I was just saying these were a $2 pack of rub ons and I had these in my retail store. Um, so these are at least, oh my god, nine years old. And without any A's in this pack, it's going to be very hard to spell any words. So. Let's just rub globs of them on here and use it up, won't we? So this will be one less packet in my box at the end of the month. Doing quite well with the box. I'm actually going to the box when I start a project. I did mission... Got a video coming up for Mission May. Mission, hang on. Mission Inspiration May. Mike Deacon puts up a mission every month, 10 steps. So I actually went to that box first when I was looking for stuff and see what I could pull out of the box. So it is working, but it is the only first month, so we'll see how the novelty wears off. So I actually like this effect. I'm sure I've got more half packs of rubble on somewhere.
Probably not the best thing to be rubbing stuff on with, but oh well. I've never been a person that does things the correct way. I've always been a person that uses things in a different way. Just because I'm weird like that. So as you can see, there's no rhyme or reason. I'm just flipping the page around. They're upside down. They're standing on their head. Some bits aren't rubbing on properly. Because I'm actually going to be tearing this up into small pieces. It really doesn't matter. Put my numbers on. Where do we need some more numbers? Some numbers down here. See, if I wasn't into art journaling, what would I do with these rub-ons? I'd actually be thrown out. But... So that's the great thing if you are a scrapbooker. You've got lots in your stash that you 